everyone and today we're going to look at my Samsung fridge freezer. I'll just get the model number for you. So it's an RSA1 WTMH. Not as common, or at least uh, if you do some search on the internet you'll find lots of guides for fixing other models but not this one. So if you look at the door, we've got a uh, flashing segment on the freezer side and that segment means that the defrost sensor is broken. So what we can do, if we hold the two outer buttons together for about 10 seconds, it will actually reset and get past the error just so you can uh, see the controls. So you can see everything's working fine. It's just, I've only just plugged it back in so that's why it's not cold. But um, it will again, it will eventually come back up with the error again for the defrost sensor. So we need to have a look at fixing that. So I'm just sort of guessing my way through this as there aren't any guides for this model on the internet. But I've taken all the glass shelves out. And then if we look at the back, we have these panels. I spoke to a, a fridge engineer who thinks that the sensor is going to be behind there. So I will have a go. Again, let's say I don't have any information to go from. I'm just giving this a try. So I'm going to take that lower panel off and if need be, we can also take this upper one off. There's some screws hidden here. So I just need to carefully prise this off. This is two screws there. So I'll try taking that lower panel off first. Getting much luck taking the lower section off. So I've undone this screw here. The two screws where the light are. The light then just pulls forward and then we can unclip it. A little clip, you've got to push the tab in, don't just pull on the wires. And we can take that off, and then we'll see if we can get this top bit off. The upper compartment just pulls forward, so it's got some clips here that it hooks around, and it's just got clips down the sides. So you just pull it forward, and then just sort of grab it with your hands from the sides, it will pull off. Um, so we've got the fan in the top section, this is the white wire for the LED, and then there's a sensor up here. Now, I assume this was a temperature sensor, but I thought I'd just check, I thought I'd unplug it and see if it gives a different error. And it does. So now showing that the freezer temperature error. So we've got two errors. So the fridge will not operate at all now with that disconnected. So I'm going to plug it back in and then carry on looking. So I've managed to pull the lower cover off now. Again, so just get your hands behind it. That top one was just sort of covering the top lip, making it difficult to remove. So it looks like what we've got here, this is the refrigeration coil. And that black one looks like that will be the heating coil because basically it's a frost free freezer. So it will heat up once it freezes up just to melt the ice. Um, the sensor should be in there then. I can't see it. I, can't, I can see a wire at the back there. Let's take this white cover off and see if it's covering any connectors up or anything. Remove one there and one there. Once you've slid it down a little bit, this exposes the fan connector. So what we need to do is press this tab in here on the front and then we can pull the connector out. Do that, obviously don't go ripping the wires off comes out fairly easily. So if you wanted to change the fan, if you had a fan error, you could do that. And also if you wanted to change the temperature sensor, that's easy enough as well. Now, let's see what we've got exposed here. I think we've got three sets of wires and this metal casing seems to cover up things going to the outside, or to the back where the compressor will be. Oh, that comes off easily enough. And we've got three sets of connectors. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull them off one at a time and see if it gives me different error messages and I can work out what's what. The upper connector, which has got a thick red and black wire, that's not changed the error message, it's exactly the same. Um, by the way, I'm doing this, I'm, take, I'm disconnecting with the power off, I don't know if it's going to mess anything up if I do it with them on. And I'm just turning it on to see what the error messages are. Uh, so that didn't do anything, and it also is a very thick wire, that's going to be the heater coil wire. So I'm just going to check the other two now. So I've disconnected the middle connector, which is two brown wires, fairly thick, and they go in a big loop all the way around. Not sure what that one's for yet, but again the error message is the same, so that's not it. So I, re I reckon those two white wires going there, to that metal sensor there, I reckon that's going to be the defrost sensor. I've tried replugging it a few times, it still comes up with the error, so I think the sensor's bad. So what we need to do is snip this wire tie here, and there's also a wire tie here, and then hopefully that'll release that housing, and we can get the sensor out. Here's the uh, sensor I've now removed. Um, it's basically, after you cut the wire tie at the top, this housing clips together. 
like so. And then we can get the sensor out. I'm just going to test it on my meter and see if it's actually open or short circuit, see if it's anything obvious as what's wrong with it. A little further investigation to find out what's what and test components. So I've connected my meter up to the red and black wires and we're getting pretty much almost a dead short. Not point, well, 0 0.6, probably less than that. The wires are probably adding some resistance. So I'm guessing that that's going to be a thermal fuse if that is not the heater. I'm guessing now that the brown wires are probably the heater. So I'm just going to test those as well. So we expect to see a short on those if it is a fuse. Uh, and if, if uh, there's an overheat problem, the fuse will fail and you'll get an open circuit. So that's another component you can replace in these. The pair of brown wires which goes to the middle connector, I'm guessing that must be the heater. As we are getting 166 ohms, which sounds like a much more sensible measurement for a heater. I'm just going to test the uh, defrost sensor now and see what reading I get on that. This leads on the defrost sensor and we're seeing 330 well, for it going up. So 340 kilo ohms and rising. That sounds very high for a temperature sensor. I would have thought it would be around five to seven kilo ohms. If, it, if that is actually a, like a normal temperature sensor, that would be a sort of sensible-ish range. Um, still going up. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's dead. I'm gonna order a new one of those and then we'll give it a try. Out of interest, I would try something so if we put a resistor in parallel, so parallel resistor theory is R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So a I'll focus a 6.2 kilo ohm resistor in parallel with the 340 kilo ohm resistance of this sensor should give about 6k. So I'm going to plug this in, plug everything in, uh, including the uh, freezer temperature sensor, otherwise it won't start up, and see what it thinks about that. Tested the freezer temperature sensor, which is good as far as I know, is reading just under 5.6 kilo ohms. So my theory that it should be six or seven kilo ohms is about right. Boots up with the resistor fitted. Oh, it looks like it is booting up. There you go. So that proves that it is that sensor at fault, um, and I will hopefully be re receiving a new one soon. I will just show you the part that I've ordered um, and the reason is I found it really difficult to find this part. It's not listed as a defrost sensor on the East Bears, which is the only place I could find this sensor actually at. Um, but that looks exactly the same as the sensor I've taken out and it is for the correct model of the freezer, it's just not listed as a defrost sensor. So. I'll obviously confirm that it is the correct one when I get it, but for anyone who wants one, this is where you can get them from. Right, I've got the new sensor. It actually took a few weeks as East Bears didn't seem to have them in stock and they had to back order it. So this is the plastic clip we took off before. The sensor looks exactly the same. We basically just need to clip it in here. And it's a bit fiddly one-handed. There you go, so clip it in there. Then we're going to clip that back on the pipe. So let's just go over to the fridge. And we're just going to clip it over this steel pipe here. Again, I can't really do that one handed, so I'll just do it off camera. It's just a clip on, and then I'm going to cable tie that back onto those wires there as I did cut those off when I took it off. It's clipped on now, so we just need the one cable tie here. We're going to route that along the bottom there, and then we're going to plug this into the bottom connector here out of the three. So that's cable tied on, and we just push the metal cover back over the wires, making sure that they exit through the hole there. Next job is to put the fan panel back on, which means we need to reconnect the fan here, and we also need to attach the temperature sensor I pulled off before. Fan panel, just so I can show you. So the fan cable is the cable at the back that goes to the connector at the back of the fridge, and the temperature sensor just clips into this little part here, and then that goes to the connector at the front of the fridge panel in so that I can show you, so that's the fan connector, that's the temperature sensor there and the LED cable is just going to be routed along here. So we're just going to push the panel into place and we've got a screw at the top and at the bottom to put back in. The panel is in place, you just need to apply some light pressure to the sides where the clips go through just to make sure that they're all pushed into the body like that. There's two at the top and that's it, just want to put the screws in. Bottom panel back in. So. If you have a look, you've got two screws in the midsection, and that's it. So we just need to angle it into place, make sure it's clipped in, and then they fit those two screws.
Next we have the top panel to fit. Now we just need to make sure that we thread the wire through for the light through that hole there. So just to show you, I'm going to place it in place and that wire that's dangling down, we're going to thread through the back and pull it through that hole. So I shall do that now. The wire threaded, I'll just show you how you clip this on. So at the bottom, there is a lip on the, so the bottom piece has a lip and we need to put this over the top of the bottom of the lip. And that holds that in place. At the top, we've got these two posts and we need to just, oh, it's out of focus. And just a bit of a tricky one to get it basically fitted on the lip and also on top of those at the same time. I will just probably end up doing this off camera. Once we've done that, we just clip it in at the back and then we've got a screw in the center to fit. We need to refit this light fitting so we've got two screws to line up and those two screws go it's this way around isn't it yes these two screws go that way that part there has the connector at the back so we're going to connect that connector push the wire back in and then screw that on there thing is on out uh, we just need to put the light cover on so we've got tabs at the top and the bottom and we're just aligning those like so and then clicking it into place. Make sure it's clicked on the back as well. There you go. That's done, let's power, let's power it up and see if it's working. To reach into the cupboard. There we go, we're powering up. And there's no error segments. We've got the temperature displays. Now the freezer's showing hotter because I've had that door open and it is actually really hot at the minute, whereas the fridge is cooler. And it looks like it's firing up fine. Check the lights coming on and it is so it looks like everything's working so i'm going to leave this to cool down now and uh, hopefully that's it right it's been running for a few minutes let's have a quick check on the temperature there we go 11 11 so it's dropping the temperature down nicely and hopefully within the next hour or two it should be down to the normal temperature